I don't even know how to kick off this video. Do you guys have any ideas? No. No, no. no ideas? No. Okay, we'll just wing it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, welcome to JKS Ranch. I'm Elva. This is River and Coulter. And basically we just do social media. Um so people had some questions they wanted to ask us and we figured a long form video would be the best thing since we're also trying to take social media a little more seriously, even though we're doing a YouTube video on our living room couch <laughs> with Amazon microphones, but here we are. Yeah. So, okay, should we just get into it? Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so, so for the start of 24, we all agreed that we um, take social media a little bit more seriously. What? I can hold the microphone if you want. Just don't move around too much and don't hit that button. Um, and so we all agreed that we would take it a little bit more seriously and that we would try harder to kind of put out more like content involving who we are. That yeah. Makes sense? Yep. So, yeah. okay. So let's just get into these questions. Okay. <laughs> all right. We're starting on strong. <laughs> what is the biological relationship between the three of us? I mean, we all like horses. No, honey. <laughs> no, the biological, like, how are we all related? So, uh, actually, I'm not related to either of them. Um, they are brother and sister. Well, brother and sister. And then I am just here. <laughs> um, we actually met. Just a friend. Just a friend. I'm just a family friend mm. is all it was. Um, when we started doing TikTok videos, I put Coulter in one of the videos one time, not thinking that it would ever blow up. And so I just called him my brother just so I didn't, like, the caption was like, my little brother acting like me or something like that. And people were asking who he was and it would be weird just to be like, my ranch hand son acting like me. You know, like it was just like too long for it to be the caption on it. So we just said, brother, not realizing it was gonna blow up. And then it started to feel like a lie the more people knew you and the more people asked, we were just like, all right. So in another podcast that I did, which was Cattle Call, we uh, I talked about that, that I talked about why um, I just stated that you're actually, you both are actually just you really were here close because friends. their dad moved in and worked here and did a lot of stuff for us. And they were here part time um, when they were with their dad. So we got really close, huh? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is the best advice you've ever been given? You want to go first? Sure. From you? From anybody. Anybody? It's probably from you how to barrel race. That's the best advice you've ever been yeah. given? Okay. Um, Elaborate on that in detail. Like, like how? Like what's? Like, what's one thing that I've told you that really helped you? Um, where to put my hands and okay. stuff. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I guess so. We're going to go bro racing tomorrow, aren't we? Yeah. Okay, what about you, Coulter? I think you should go first because I'm still kind of thinking. You're I've thinking? been okay. told a lot of good advice, <laughs> so. Um, the best advice I think I've ever been given is... Mm. There's so many cool things that I've been told that I that have shaped me and formed me into the person I am now. But I think the number one thing is the donkey. He's pretty mean. Do you hear that? Yeah. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but we have a donkey and he is yeah. belching. Mm -hmm. Um probably. Hmm. Oh. Um, I would say the best advice that I was ever given was probably, yeah, I don't know. What about you? I think, like, I don't know exactly what, I don't, I don't remember who said this to me. I was really young, about five, but somebody was like, you can either, like, stay down or you can get back up. That's not exactly what he said, but that's what he was meaning to say. Okay. Yeah. And, like. Yeah, I was really young. I don't remember. I, no, that's a good. That's a good 
you know, way to put it. I actually, now I'm thinking about it, I think the best advice I've ever been given is that you can't, don't talk, like, just because someone criticizes you doesn't mean you have to talk to them back. Like, you don't have to, like, acknowledge them. Acknowledge them, yeah. Because it's a quote, and it's like, it says, um, if you throw if you throw rocks at every dog that barks at you, you'll never get to your destination, or it's going to take you longer to get to your destination. So why stop and throw rocks just because a dog's barking at you? Just keep going. They're not going to get to you. They can't touch you. Yeah. You know? Just keep going. Um, I heard this thing on Instagram, and it was really, it's not like advice, but it, it was like, it touched my heart. It said, um, if you get what you want, that's Jesus's direction. And if you don't get what you want, that's Jesus's protection. Oh, I love that. Mm-hmm. That's actually really good. That's a really good one. She topped us right there. <laughs> yeah. She topped us. Okay, that was good. Yeah, no, that's so true. Okay. Well, I mean, God does have a plan for all of us. Yeah, he has yeah. a plan for each and every one of us. And there's been several things in my life that have that I wished for that didn't, didn't happen. And I would be like, man, like, I thought, you know, like, just because I wanted it, I thought that was, like, what I needed. But God had, like, something completely different, you yeah. know, um, in mind for me. Okay. Would you ever stay in the horse industry competing but not with rodeo? If so, what would you switch to? Well, technically, right now, me and River are the only two that rodeo. Coulter is starting on his new rope horse and he's working yeah. on it but right now it's just me and river but i guess you could still answer the question like if you could do like it can't be something in radio so like, uh, what do they mean by that? like there's different sports like in the industry um in the horse industry like there's you know jumping probably oh, those. for me it would probably be boxing no in the horse industry What's that? Yeah, no, <laughs> not like that. Like the cow at the end of the arena, and you like move your horse with the cow and make sure it doesn't get past. You mean cutting? It, I don't know what it's called, but I have done it before. Me too. Either cutting. I or sucked at it though. Well, I, I got it second was, place. It was my first time. Probably cutting. But like Patchy, it wasn't the horse's fault. It was my fault. But. I like turned him all the way around in a whole circle, and I lost because of that. Well, That's yeah, cool. honestly, if I were to do anything else that wasn't within the realms of rodeo, it would be, it would probably be jumping. Same. Like I think it but, would be so cool. Yeah, I did jump on Dusty, but then I, she stopped in the middle of a jump and threw me. And I had a huge cut, like, right here. And it hurt so bad. No, not. Okay. Okay, it was just this Coulter rodeo. That's one question. Coulter, as of right now, doesn't rodeo, but he's working on it. Yeah. He's very handy around the place. He just yeah. doesn't rodeo. It's true. Yeah, it's true. <clears throat> okay, do most Western media stars act the same in person as they do on the internet? No. I don't. Trust me, I do not. You don't think you act the same on the internet as you do in person? Really? Yeah, I'm like shy. I'm like super shy. Oh, on camera. Yeah. But in per yeah, you're not shy in person by any means. Yeah. Which isn't a bad thing. Um, I say for the most part I act pretty much the same on camera as I do in person because a lot of my content is just it's never like anything staged. It's always like what I'm doing right then, right there. Yeah. It's always pretty. So I, I would say I do, but most of everybody else, like, I mean, I know quite a few, and they act the same, like, Remo, Nick, Roy, all of them, they all act the same, but the ones that, like, I'm thinking of right now, I'm not going to name drop, like, no, for, like, for the majority of Western influencers don't act the same when you meet them. Have you met any of them? No. I don't think so. I haven't. Besides you. <laughs> Do you think I act the same? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Elba, what is your favorite thing about Coltern River? And Coltern River, what is your favorite thing about Elba? Oh, okay, okay. yay. You guys go first. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of us? Okay. Um, do I have to name one thing? <laughs> do I have to name Just one? name it all. Hmm. There's a lot of things. Aww. <laughs> um. I don't know which one to choose from. Probably, probably that you teach me like everything about rodeo. Okay, that's sweet. And your hair. You like my hair? Yeah. It was blonde. Yeah. Used to be. I do <laughs> too. Me too. To be honest, I think everyone does. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay, Colter. I like the way that she manages the ranch. Really? Yeah. yeah. And I feel like I flop a lot. Like, I feel like I, like, fail a lot. I mean, you do ride your horses, and I well, don't. Well, you can't, ride like, horses. you there never get it right if you don't make mistakes. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like I could, like, really excel, and I don't, like, I feel like I'm not putting in my full fourth effort into it, but there's so many things I'm, like, trying to juggle at one time. It's, like, so hard to, like, juggle this, too, but I. Yeah. I mean. Thank you. That was sweet. Okay, my favorite thing about River. Hmm. Girl, mm. I think my favorite thing about you is that you won't take any crap from anyone. Like, if if someone tests you, you're like, uh-uh. You know what I mean? Which yeah. is, like, such, like, a, a but... powerful trait for a woman because... I feel like women get walked all over a lot because it's really good from a young age. Yeah, but the one thing that I do mess up all the time with somebody in Central and when I used to go to Kyoto, Bailey and probably Blakely. Mm-hmm. Um, when they're my friend, like I agree that they're my friend. And I want to be their friend, too. But when they're not, then I'm like, no. Like, I don't talk to them. But then they want to be my friend again, and I'm their friend again. And I try not to, but then I do it again. What? (laughs) (laughs) So busy. I'm not even listening. You lost me at want to be your friend. I don't even know what you're talking about. Um, I don't know what you're talking when about. they're my friend, I want to be their friend, but when they're not, then I'm not, but then they want to be my friend again, and then I'm their friend again. Why are they not your friend? Like, when they're always mean to me. And oh, if they're mean to you, they're not your friend. Yeah. 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 Um, My favorite thing about Coulter is that he's so sweet and so kind all the time, especially to me. Like... I know on camera or whatever, you like it's like you roasted me, but you were like so sweet and so kind. Like remember when that thing happened with my dog and he literally would not let go of me all night long. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, I heard you screaming and crying. I know he was bad. Well, thank you. Yeah, you're really sweet. You're sweet too, but you've got that like fire that I admire. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What's y'all's favorite restaurant? Oh, Probably Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> what about you? Yeah. Hmm. Something just came to my head. They should make a restaurant that has beer. Like has special kinds of how to make. Like, I think they do. Beer. Don't they? I don't know. Shouldn't they? No, I restaurant my favorite. Mine is crawpappies. Mm-hmm. They have crawfish. My favorite. That's not surprising. Yeah. I don't know. Um. You can't think of anything? No. Your house. My house is your favorite Yes, restaurant? because you cook all the time. And <laughs> your food is so good. Thank you. <laughs> your food is so sweet. <laughs> okay. What is some of Coulter's hobbies? Roping is one. 
Okay. Um. He likes to collect knives. Oh yeah, and yeah. hat and prime bottles. Remember when no, you were raiding not, them? I'm not in that anymore. That sucked. Uh, I hated them. Okay. <laughs> how did you get to the place you are in life right now? Like, how are you so successful? Oh, I'm. I'm not. You are successful. Like I don't know for your how. Your guys' age, you're super successful. Like. Success probably coming what? from that advice that we talked about rodeo earlier. or like yeah and anything you put your mind to you're pretty successful in it anything yeah. I suck at um, training dogs though I mean the place <laughs> that I'm at right now I would say that I'm successful because of my parents and the people I surrounded myself with like I didn't realize how like important a circle was. But also, I didn't have to, like, I had to weed people out, but I started off with a really good circle. Like, I have a really good family. My dad surrounded me with, like, really good people. He paid, like, the best trainers to help me. Like, I had really, really good people that never talked me down. Um, probably why I'm so successful. I don't know. Probably your horse does teach me in building. You think I've heard this? The horse? No. Okay. I would just say that think, for like me. I would it would probably be like you and my dad. Your dad's a pretty influential person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I think like a lot of it is like the people that I surrounded myself with. I think that was like a really big important thing. And I feel like growing up I, I would lose a friend friend or I would lose somebody that I was like really close to but it was really God taking them out of my life and it would like spring me and then it was like the second that happened like things would change inside of me and these accolades and things that would be met it, it really does like you're a lot of people's success stems from who you surround yourself with yeah so you two remember this like always surround yourself with good people people have bad intentions not surround yourself with them like plain and simple does culture plan on doing rodeo barrel racing bull riding etc when he grows up he does yes, like roping. Bull riding. Yeah. no he's said no he's gonna he's gonna be a team roper or a cap roper <laughs> or probably both yeah i would be very happy if he did both yeah where do you see yourself in five years mm -hmm. all three of us yeah go in a four Okay. Five NFR in five years. How old are you? <gasps> in five years, sixteen. <laughs> yeah, you won't be old enough to make NFR. Uh, you have to be. You you can't buy your car until you're like eighteen. Years. Okay. Oh, um. Nine. You you could be at sixteen. You'll be um successful in, car. 10, 11, I mean successful 12, truck. 13, 14, at sixteen, you want to have a successful truck. 15. Probably a three fifty Nulu. At sixteen. Okay. Um, that or like, I don't know, any type of Ford, I guess. I'm gonna be or Dodge. I I'm like gonna Dodge. be fifteen in five years. They no, don't. but you'll be. I'll be fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah, because I'm not. I'm yeah, probably. Uh, yeah. I don't know why. Successful I it. So, hopefully what I, are your goals? Um, hopefully, I. Pass my driver's test, unlike my two older brothers. <laughs> um, my like maybe I should fail it on purpose so mm. all of us have. No, <laughs> my goal is probably going to be having like four or more successful horses in barrel racing, roping. Okay, so Maybe. now what are the steps you need to take to get there? Practice every day. Practice every day. Ride every day. Take care of your horses. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What about how are you going to get this F350 at 16? Probably save up money from roping. I'll get somebody to help me out, taking me to jackpots and stuff. Me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then I'll like save up the money that I get and I'll buy that and then I can just start taking myself. 
in five years, so I'm 21 now, so I'll be 26, right? Yeah. We're 10 yeah. years apart, 26. so yeah. Exactly. Uh, so I would hope that I have a good set of fraternity colts going. And if things go well, I've got a really good pro horse going. Um, that's what I'm working on right now is I've got a nice set of fraternity colts. Hopefully one of them will make a nice pro rodeo horse and I'm pro rodeoing. But if anything, I want to be fraternitying. And the best of things, I want to have a horse that I can pro rodeo on. So yeah, in five years, I see myself, I don't know if I'll be married. I don't know if I'll have kids. Probably not. Um, yeah. But that's where I, I see myself. I see myself, um, you know, having this ranch way more organized than ever before. I mean, this place is improving every month. If we add something new to it every month, we never stay stagnant. That's the one thing that I really like about the operation that we have going, that we're always adding something new. But I, I see this place with a lot more potential than what we are at right now. So I hope in five years that this, you, this place won't, won't even be recognizable. I think, I think you're, I'm going to name three, but your probably most successful cult are probably going to be Cupid, Rolo, and Eugene. Eugene, really? You think Eugene? Yeah. I, Rolo and Cupid definitely have my bets for sure. And yeah. Eugene might be a diamond in a rough. We never know. Yeah. I don't know what old Pac-Man is, but if he's like... He's not a cult. Oh, then... He's finished. Yeah. He's already done his time. <laughs> uh, okay. What's your dream future job? My job. Family, home, like, what's the dream? Like, right now, what would be your dream home? Job and family. Home, job, and a family. Mm-hmm. Home, like probably like this, but like added on bigger. Okay. And job, probably to work at a vet. Really? Yeah. I can make that happen for you. Mm-hmm. And family. I'm hoping two or three kids and a husband, like, perfectly. We're going to have to crop that out. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Um... Yeah, we're cropping that out. I understand what you mean, but we can't put that in. So, um, <laughs> okay, Colter, you go. Um, like River said, two or three kids, a home job. I don't know, working around the ranch. I'm going to hopefully have a big ranch and then an actual job. I'm going to rope a lot on the weekends and during the weekdays, hopefully will. Um, how many kids did you say that? How many kids you want? Yeah, yeah, two or three. Oh. Okay, I would want my dream job would be to rodeo and fraternity and do that. And obviously, social like I'm living my dream right now. Like getting paid to do social media is a dream come true. Yeah, mine. and representing brands and things like that. That's a dream for me. But um, the next step is to my writing to pay for everything also and so like my dream job would be able to make a full-on income pro rodeoing not even need social media you know um yeah mine is probably social media and stuff like that yeah i think a dream family would be two or three kids um (laughs) yeah two or three kids yeah that's enough (laughs) um a husband that knows what he's doing, not like a little yeah. city boy. Yeah, definitely. And home, I already know like exactly what I, what I want to build back there, mm-hmm. um, you know, on that mountain. And then just do like a four or five bedroom home, two stories, of course. It'll be really big. Yeah, mine will probably but be I, two stories. I love too. this house so much, but the plan is to rent it out to someone when I'm done with it. So 
something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. What are all of your future plans for the next few years? Hmm. Roping. Just rodeoing and social media. Me too. That's pretty much, like, I, I just plan on rodeoing. Plan yeah. on, like, working on my fraternity cult. Yeah. I plan on making this place better. And yeah. Okay. How long ago did you get into rodeo and how did you do it? I got into rodeo when I was like, I've been riding since I was like two or three, or like three. And then I've been rodeoing since I was seven. And I had a couple friends that were talking about going to this like local rodeo. And I was like, oh, I want to do that. And so that's what we did. We went to the, um, my dad took me down there and started rodeoing sucked really bad and I kept getting more competitive and social media actually showed me that there's like this whole bigger world to it like there's a whole like it's not just these little play days not just these little show videos I got really really into it and here we are yeah um does it like I was probably barrel racing on Dusty when I was like five with mom of course Mm -hmm. leading me around the barrels uh when I first started riding a horse, we have a baby picture of, I think it was Parker, the gunner, holding me, but that doesn't count. Okay. But probably, probably about your age. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Biggest tips about breaking cold. I didn't answer the last one. Oh. Oh. oh but, sorry. No, you're fine. Um. I've been, we used to have this, like, double-seated saddle, as Dobriz would call it, Buddy Rancher. But, anyway, I've, my mom would, my mom took me in a parade once on a horse. I was, like, two or three, something like that. And then I used to go to these shodios in Mojo. Yeah. That's where I started. Yeah, same, same. same. But I've been riding a while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We've all been riding a while. Yeah. Biggest tip about breaking colts. I guess I'm the only one that breaks colts. I have a. I mean, I've rode one I before that tip. bucked. Definitely. And I didn't come off. So. My biggest tip about breaking colts is that you start slow, really, really slow, and start as soon as they drop on the ground. Like the second they drop, hands on them. That just makes it, it just makes it so much easier when you get to handling them because once they're two or three and you go to start, you know, teaching them how to lead, they're already so big. It's so hard to, you know, get anything done. Start when they're babies. Start teaching them, you know, the basics when they're babies, and then by the time they're two or three, like we'd start them when they were two, and we'd desensitize them so much I could hop on their bareback and they'd just be like, okay. Like, that's how we started everything. I started four or five colts now bareback in a halter. Never put a saddle on them. Then once they rode around really good bareback, then I started putting a saddle on them. It made the training system, everything so much easier. And I I will always, you know, do it that way. Yeah, mine is probably... Hmm. The biggest one is probably... Getting them used to water, like, stuff with water. Okay. Yeah. Like, walking them through mud puddles. Yeah. And desensitizing I get it. Water stuff. Mine is, you don't want to beat them, but you also yeah. don't want to let them do whatever they want. Yeah. yeah. Um, I saw this thing on Instagram where it said, like, I already knew this, but, like, it said... If the horse turns out bad, it's not the <clears throat> horse's fault. It's your fault. Valid. <laughs> Valid. Um, How old are you all? Eleven. Eleven. Nine. Twenty-one. See? Um...
Okay, one last question. I'm like trying to find. What's your advice for anyone starting out with their first horse? Oh, this one? It's like breaking a horse. You want to work slow with the horse and yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And also don't My... beat yourself down if you can't get it right away. Yeah. A hundred percent. Mine is probably learning a, like the body of the horse. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I I would say that too. Like I, I wanna say give yourself a lot of grace and forgive yourself a lot because you can't compare yourself to people yeah. that are, you know, a little bit further along than you are. But also when you're first starting out and you've got your first horse, you need to learn everything you can. I think yeah. the best thing anyone can do is go work for a vet and learn the ins and outs of horses. Um, it That was one thing. I worked for a fraternity trainer, then I went to work for a vet. And that was the best thing that I could have ever done because it, it, it transformed how I thought about the body and what to do when it comes to training. It, it transformed everything. Like it you know, I, I realized like they can't take what we think they can take. They're not machines. And not that I thought that in the first place, but I, I knew then like how to maintain them. Like a lot of people don't know that you, you have on these performance horses, you have to maintenance, you give them maintenance. They're not just yeah. these machines that, you know, and even machines, you got to take them in for an oil check. You got to like, you have to give them maintenance. And the same thing for a horse, something that's being yeah. used to perform they need that and um so i think that's like the biggest thing you you could ever do is learn the medicine and the body and everything a horse you know you need a horse yeah you, you need to learn and that yeah. that's really what transformed a lot of my training so all right well that's it we did it i know we should all right well we could also get questions while we're live oh, like yeah. we don't have to wait yeah. All right, well, that's it for, I, it's not our fit first YouTube video, but that's it for our first, like, actual trying for YouTube video. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's probably a little boring, a little more casual, but I hope you guys enjoyed it because we just tried to make it more oriented to what you guys wanted to know. Yeah. All right. Maybe it wasn't recording this whole time. What?